Hi, it's Alex Berry with Cobalt Boats. The goal today is to familiarize you with the systems on the Cobalt A36 Bow Rider. Keep in mind that the systems, for the most part, are very similar to those on the A36 Coupe, but there are some differences. So let's get started. We're going to start by identifying the different antennas and other hardware on top of the hardtop. You can see it from here and working from left to right. The first antenna is the television antenna right over there on the left side. It is an option. Next to it is the big one, the Garmin radar antenna. That particular model is an open array 48 mile antenna. There is also a 24 mile antenna that is in an enclosed dome. And right behind it, you can see the navigation light mast, which of course is standard equipment, also known as the all around light, and is always there on all models. Just to the right of that, you can see the electric horns, which of course are standard equipment. Right in the middle on the front of the top is the optional spotlight. What isn't on this particular model, but is a very popular option, is a VHF marine radio, and there would be a fiberglass antenna up there as well. Continuing on with external hardware, on the deck we have three major fittings. One on the starboard side here is the fuel fill. has a very simple flip-out handle, comes right off with a lanyard to prevent it from going over the side. On the port side, we have two of these. One is the water fill, also having a lanyard, and the third one is the waste pump out. Be very cautious with that one because there is no lanyard and it does not float. So make sure that whoever is removing that one to pump out the holding tank has a good firm grip on it because once again it will not float. The fuel tank on this boat is 189 gallons and by the way these gas engines love 87 octane. You don't need to use high test or 89. Won't hurt a thing but they love 87. These fittings that you see right here of which there are three on each side are the receptacles for the fenders. That's a really nice option and a lot of people ask us, what are these for? This is where the fender cleat sticks in. Let's talk about the windlass system. You would normally operate the windlass system from up here in the bow compartment. There is an emergency rocker switch at the driver's dash that you would use in an emergency situation. That would be when the weather conditions or the sea conditions were such that it would be unsafe to be up here to use it. But the best windlass there is, none of them are trouble free. So you want to be up here to monitor it as it's running, either out or in. So you would come up here, open your anchor locker lid, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to release the safety lanyard. This lanyard is there to prevent accidental lowering of the anchor when you don't want it to. This prevents the anchor from coming out when something fails or someone accidentally lowers it when you don't want them to. This particular boat is set up with the chain counter and the remote operating system rather than switches. But either way, the system works pretty much the same. With the chain counter option, you can tell exactly how much you have let out, which is really a great thing to know based on how much depth you're dealing with. So it becomes very, very handy. It also is a very safe way to let out chain because you don't ever have to let out more than what you need. It also is great for retracting because it will tell you how much chain you've got out and how much more you have to retract before the anchor comes back into its housing on the front of the boat. Once you have pulled the anchor back in, 
then you always want to reinstall the safety lanyard. That is extremely important and something you always want to do. Once you've got that lanyard installed, your anchor completely housed, you just put all of this stuff back in the basket where it goes, hang up your chain counter controller, close it up, and off you go. Anchoring your A36 is really pretty easy and it'll become second nature to you pretty quickly. The big thing you got to take into consideration is what is the bottom of the lake or river, whatever, wherever you're anchored, what is it? Please rely on your dealer to give you that information because every lake is a little different. If it's sand versus rock, it takes a different amount of chain or road out than it would be if it were just sand. This boat comes with 125 feet of chain, so you can anchor in some very deep water if need be. Normally, you're probably going to be anchoring 30, 40 feet, something like that. The beauty of the chain is you don't have to have but about half the road that you would if you had chain and line. So it's a big plus. But do rely on your dealer to get you the right information regarding where you're going to be anchoring and how much chain you should be letting out in a given amount of water. When you come aboard your A36 bow rider for the first time in let's say several days, you're probably going to have secured it from the last outing electrically, meaning that your battery switches are turned off, boat hasn't been used for a few days. So the first thing when you come aboard is you're going to open this panel and you're going to turn on your battery switches which are located right here on the starboard side. Just a quarter turn with all three of them, the house battery, and both engine batteries that turns on your 12 volt power to your boat. Additionally in this panel there are many circuit breakers and other controls for a lot of systems in the boat. Most importantly in here other than your battery switches we've got a pair of jumper ports. If for some reason your batteries are dead and you cannot get the motor box open or for whatever reason can't start your engines, you can use a jumper pack on these ports and actually start an engine, but more realistically you can use a jumper pack to open the motor box and then find out what the problem is. If that has happened, you probably need to advise your cobalt dealer that your batteries have gone dead for some reason and he needs to be involved to figure out what's happened, what's caused that. Additionally, you've got three rocker switches, on-off switches right here in the center between the jumper ports, which are really important. Should you have a failure on the boat of, say, your navigation lights, and you're out at night and for whatever reason they don't want to turn on and you cannot figure out why, you can always turn them on right here with this center switch. This bypasses the systems in the boat and puts power directly to your navigation lights so that you can be seen by other boats out there on the lake at night. Extremely important. Additionally, you have power available to your two automatic build systems. It overrides the system, including the automatic float switch parts, so that both bilge pumps come on immediately so that should you be taking on water for some reason, it will pump it out. Those are big bilge pumps. They will pump a tremendous amount of water overboard really rapidly. So those are important things to know. Lastly, in here, on the main engine battery switches, you'll notice that there are merge positions. If you turn those battery switches to merge, this is also known as cross-connecting. What it does is it takes all three batteries located in the engine room and hooks them all together and makes one great big battery. It's not good to run the boat that way, but oftentimes if you've got one or two batteries that are down on voltage for whatever reason, it'll hook all three of them together, allowing you to start your main engines. Once you get your engines running, 
then you want to switch it back to the normal on position. Finally, down at the bottom of the panel, we have circuit breakers for our major components on the boat, such as the windlass, that sort of thing, things that take a tremendous amount of current. And uh, they are right here. Additionally, you can stop things from being able to be used, such as the windlass. If you have youngsters aboard that love to push switches when you don't want them to, you can push a button on the windlass circuit breaker right here. A little yellow flapper will pop out of the bottom indicating that that system is now unable to be used. So no one can operate that thing without having to reset this and protect uh, you from having the anchor being lowered when you don't want it to. At the end of the day, it's always a good idea to go ahead and shut off your battery switches, but keep in mind that your bilge pumps are still powered up. So that should, for some reason, something start leaking, your bilge pumps are gonna to continue to work and keep the boat pumped out. In addition to that, the stereo system still has power so that those stations you have programmed into that stereo, it will not forget those. They'll still be there tomorrow when you come back to the boat. So shut off the switches, close the door, enjoy the rest of the day. The next system we're going to talk about is the electrical systems on the A36 bow rider. There are two major systems aboard. One is the 12 volt DC system, and the other is the 110 volt AC system. Right now we're going to talk about the 110 volt AC system. It is supplied by either shore power or the onboard generator. Let's talk about shore power first. Shore power comes from two 30 amp power cables supplied with the boat through two 30 amp circuits. This is what a 30 amp cord looks like and all you have to do is plug it in but there is a sequence to this to do it safely. The first thing you want to do is plug it into the boat not to the source on the dock. You do not want this plug being full of electricity or being hot before you plug it into the boat. That is not the safe way to do things. So the first thing we're going to do is plug it into the boat. You can plug in one circuit or two, that's your choice. You simply plug it into one of the two circuits and then right ahead of that is a white door that you open and turn on the respective input circuit breaker. You will notice that there are two breakers there because there are two input circuits. We've used the lower one just for convenience sake, so I'm going to energize the lower breaker. So we have plugged in our 30 amp cord. We opened the door and turned on the respective circuit breaker, and that's all there is to it as far as the boat is concerned. On the other end of our 30 amp cord, we're going to plug it into the respective outlet on the dock set up for 30 amp power. Your Cobalt has two 30 amp inlets and two 30 amp cords supplied with it as standard equipment. Normally though, you can get by with just using one of them. That one 30 amp cord will power up everything in the boat, but the exception would be is if you had the optional grill and wanted to run it at the same time you were running the air conditioning, then you would need both cords plugged in so that each one of those is running on its own circuit. But normally, you'll just have one of them plugged in and you can line it up to where everything is powered off that one circuit and you can run either the air conditioning or the grill, your choice. A quick review. We've got our power coming into the boat through the 30 amp shore power cord through the circuit breaker or breakers if we've got two 30 amp cords plugged in, which is just fine. And they are in turn supplying our cabin mounted distribution panel right here. 
we're going to focus on the left two panels of this panel. The right side of it, or the right panel, is the 12 volt side, and we'll worry about that a little bit later. Right now we're going to focus on the left two sides, which are the two circuits, the two 30 amp circuits coming into the boat. We have two breaker switches right here where we can select where the power is coming from to supply these two 30 amp sides. Each switch has an off position one, position two, and generator. So right now we have one 30 amp cord coming in and so I have both switches selected to position one because I have that cord plugged into the number one input. So I've got one cord supplying both of my 30 amp inputs. We've got 120 volts coming in to both circuits. Each one of these circuits has circuit breaker switches which enables you to turn on the specific functions in the boat that require 110 volts. For example, the air conditioning. If the boat had the optional uh, countertop cook stove, that would be one. And other outlets on the boat that uh, you could plug in a hair dryer, for example. Uh, so there are several things that you can uh, uh, power up with 110 volts on the boat. There are two really important 110 volt systems on the boat that you need to pay particular attention to. One on each of the 110 volt circuits. On the left side, we have our battery charger. There is a circuit breaker switch for it. And this is one switch that you can leave on 110% of the time, so to speak. So when you're plugged into shore power, your battery charger is running. You do not have to turn it off when you're running your main engines on the boat. It doesn't care. And also, if you happen to be running in the generator position when you're out running the boat and you have your generator on, there again, you want it on. You want that battery charger running. So you can leave it on 100% of the time. No problem. It's, it's a good idea just to have it on all the time. On the other side, over here, is the air conditioning. So it's a good idea to have it on a separate circuit, which it is. And the important thing to remember about air conditioning, for those of you that keep your boat on a trailer or up in the air on a hydro hoist or, or some sort of a hoist, the boat has to be in the water to run air conditioning. It is a water-cooled system. So it is literally pumping water out of the lake, through the system, and back out into the lake. That's why you see water squirting out of the side of the boat when the air conditioning is running. The thing to remember about the air conditioning system is it has to prime. So if you drop your boat into the water off your trailer or off of a hoist, it has to prime before it can run. So. If you have the optional self-priming system, all you have to do is turn it on and it primes. If you do not have that system, you'll have to run the boat through the water at about 20 miles an hour and then it will self-prime itself. Check with your dealer on your particular boat as to which type of system you have and he can give you further information about it. But uh, in either case, the system will prime and off you go. So those two systems are the only ones that are a little unique to the boat and uh, do require a little bit of extra knowledge. Let's talk about the 12 volt side of the cabin mounted distribution panel. The 12 volt side is getting its power from the house battery. On the 12 volt side of the panel, there is a gauge indicating the voltage in the house battery. From there and down below are the switches that are controlled by this panel. These are actual circuit breaker switches, each one of them indicating the amperage of that particular circuit breaker. There is nomenclature to the right indicating what each one of these circuit breaker switches controls. Most importantly, you have your refrigerator, 
the water pump system, the satellite TV, the stereo system, and so forth. Once again, each one is indicated as to what it controls. It's just as simple as that. The generator control panel is located right next to my right leg here at the operator station. From here, I can start and stop the generator and monitor its functions. To start the generator, I simply push the on side of the generator start stop switch. What will happen is four red lights illuminate momentarily, indicating that the systems has, have been checked and everything is okay. Then the generator will start itself, and when it starts and runs, a green light will turn on and the system is working correctly. On the right side of that red light bar, there are two red lights that might come on. This is an indication that there is a fault in the system somewhere. Typically, what it is telling us is that there is a low level of voltage in the system. This can happen either with the generator running or not. It is telling us that in the house battery system, there is a low voltage problem. When this happens, the generator may or may not stay running. One of the things that you always want to make sure of is that when the generator is on, down in the cabin at the cabin control panel, that we have the generator selected where you would either select generator or shore power. So we want to make sure that the generator is selected on those switches and that the battery charger is turned on. Keep in mind that battery charger puts out 60 amps, which is way more than anything in the boat can use. With the battery charger selected and the generator selected, those two red lights will not come on and you will not have this problem. Additionally, these lights on the generator control panel can show other issues. And these issues are, for the most part, covered in the owner's manual supplied with your new Cobalt. And your Cobalt dealer is well versed in this system and can be of great assistance to you should any of these occur. The generator is located right in front of my hand, forward of the main engines in the engine room. And on the face of it is the control panel. On that control panel, there are two switches that you need to be concerned with and a third switch that you probably won't ever have to worry about. The two to be concerned with are an emergency start stop switch, which is identical to the switch at the driver station for starting and stopping the generator. There is also a reset button, which is a rocker switch that you might have to use should the generator have a fault. So if you come across a circumstance where those two red lights on the control panel at the driver's station have illuminated, you probably will need to come back to the generator itself and reset the rocker switch and you just reset it and your generator will probably be ready to restart. There is one more switch towards the front of the boat on the top of that box that you can reach with your hand, which is the AC output to the boat that you can reach forward, but it's very unlikely that that will ever pop. At any rate, any of these are accessible through the engine hatch into the engine room for the generator. The last subject I want to talk about in regards to the generator is fuel. There is one fuel tank on this boat, and it's a big one, 189 gallons. But all three engines, both main engines and the generator, are all drawing off that one tank. Now the two main engines can pull all the fuel out of that main tank, but the generator cannot. The pickups that go down into the tank, the generator pickup is shorter than the main engine pickups, deliberately so, so that it cannot pull all the fuel out of the tank. So the bottom line is, is that you do not want to run the, t the fuel level in the tank below the level of where the generator can pull fuel out. The reason is, is that if the generator runs out of gas, 
it's very difficult to reprime it and your dealer will probably need to be involved to do that. So rule of thumb is keep your boat with at least approximately 30% fuel load. So when your boat gets down to around 40, 35, even 30%, refill it. Don't let it get below 30% and then you won't have that problem. Both the generator and the air conditioning units are water cooled and as such get their coolant from outside of the boat. The coolant comes in through what are called seacocks, which are valves in the bottom of the boat, which supply water to sea strainers, which are basically big water filters. These in turn clean the water before they go to their respective units and occasionally need to be cleaned, especially in areas where there might be seagrass or something of that nature that could plug them up. The sea cocks in the bottom must be closed before the sea strainers are cleaned. So you simply close the valve, which is a quarter of a turn. It's a fairly large handle in the bottom of the boat. And then the sea strainer, the cap is unscrewed and you pull out a brass basket, which is cleaned. It's reassembled, close the cap, open the valve and you're back in business. This needs to be done periodically in some areas, it's a weekly chore. In some areas, very, very seldom. In addition to the regular fire extinguishers that come with this boat as standard equipment, this particular Cobalt has the automatic fire extinguisher system built into the engine compartment. It's comprised of the fire extinguisher bottle in the engine room, which is heat sensitive and goes off when the temperature in the engine room gets to a certain point. In addition to that particular aspect of the system, at the driver's station there are two components. One is a round circular panel with a green light that indicates when the system is charged and ready to go. So the driver knows that the system is active and working and charged. If that green light goes off, that means the system is discharged and something has gone wrong. Additionally, at the driver's station, there is a T-handle that the driver can pull and make the system discharge at his discretion. So if he feels there's a problem in the engine room, he can pull that handle and make that system discharge. And if there is a problem back there, it will extinguish it pretty much immediately. So it's a nice system to have aboard. Let's talk about the water system aboard the A36 bow rider. It's a 27 gallon tank with an, an additional six in the water heater. The most of the system is located on the port side under the floor, right straight across from the driver. That includes the water pump and the water heater itself. The water heater is both 110 volt heated with a switch controlling the 110 in the cabin panel. And also it is a closed loop system, meaning that hot water from the port engine is being circulated through a closed loop system internally in that hot water heater, heating that water anytime that left engine is running. So without even plugging in to shore power or running the generator, if that left engine is running, you've got copious amounts of hot water, more than you'd probably ever use. It's a great system, very simple and trouble free. On the A36 bow rider, we have an extremely nice sized head compartment, including the standard vacuum flush toilet system. In order for the system to operate, we do need to turn on the switch in the cabin panel marked head, which powers up the vacuum flush system. In addition, we need to turn on the vacuum flush system in the head compartment itself and we need to turn on the water pump in the head compartment which powers up the water pump for, for the entire water system in the boat both the shower on the transom and the sink in the head compartment
let's talk about the dash on the Cobalt A36 bow rider. This is known as the Cobalt Glass Dash. These are Garmin screens designed by Volvo. And these screens give us the ability to put whatever we want, wherever we want it, regarding navigation functions, engine functions. We can switch whatever we want to wherever we want it. So the first thing we got to do is just like any computer, we need to boot it up. And we do so by powering on the ignitions. Once the screens get to this point, you simply press the OK button on either screen, it doesn't matter which one, and it'll bring up the last screens that you were on. Now if you don't remember for sure that you were on the screens that uh, you wanted, you can always go to the home button on either screen and you can select whatever you want to. What's beautiful about these is that you can always go back to what the factory settings were by selecting smart mode and that'll take you back to what was originally set up by Cobalt for your boat. But just for the sake of discussion, let's say the last time you were out, somebody else started playing with these. That's okay. Let's say that they decided to uh, put your gauges over here on the left side instead of the right side, which is normally where they would be. And they just did a lot of stuff and you're sitting there going, well, how do I fix that? The easiest way is to go back to home, press smart mode, push cruising, and you're right back to where you were. You can always go home, push smart mode, push cruising, and you're back to the original factory settings. It takes all the guesswork out of getting back to where you started from. These Garmin screens are infinitely flexible. You can set them up however you want to, but you can always go back to how they were set up by Cobalt for you by using the smart mode buttons. Another really nice feature that Cobalt has incorporated into this boat is the touch switches on the dash for all your navigation features. For example, your navigation lights, anchor lights, etc., all the way across are just touch switches. And what's really nice is the very first one closest to the walk entrance into the area is your navigation lights. So let's say you're coming aboard the boat, it's fairly dark at night, you just touch the navigation light switch, all it does is light up your nav lights, but as important, it also illuminates all the rest of the lights so that you can see which one you want to turn on next, docking lights, swim platform lights, etc. A very nice feature so you don't have to try to hunt and peck to find the rest of the lights that you want. The Cobalt A36 bow rider is equipped as standard equipment with Lenco's automatic trim tab system. These are automatically controlled trim tabs which can be run manually if you so desire. When you accelerate as the boat reaches four miles an hour, the tabs automatically deploy to their fullest, helping the boat get to planing speed quicker and keeping the nose of the boat down for great visibility coming on plane. As the boat approaches about 20 miles an hour, the tabs retract, allowing the boat to accelerate nice and quickly to its planing speeds of around 25, 26, 27 miles per hour, depending on the load in the boat. Then there is a gyro built into the dash of the boat sensing lateral movement in the boat or lateral stability as we call it and that will take over leveling the boat from side to side. There is a delay involved in this movement of anywhere from 8 or 9 as much as maybe 30 seconds before it will level things up but it does work and it works very very nicely compensating for wind conditions and load conditions within the boat. Once again, if you prefer, you can always run the system manually and then once you get it where you want it, you can push the auto switch on the control and it will take over and maintain that attitude for you. The A36 bow rider is equipped with trim assist, a feature from Volvo that Cobalt has chosen to make as standard equipment. 
This system trims the drive units automatically based on engine RPM and therefore the speed of the boat. It is automatic and anytime you're operating the boat, it will do so totally automatically based again on the boat speed as a result of the engine speed. You can override the system by simply operating the rocker switch on the side of the throttle control. And when you do, there will be a pop-up on the screen, on the Garmin screens, showing the exact trim angle at any time. You do not have to use power trim assist. You will find that you probably will use it almost all of the time. But there might be an occasion for whatever reason where you don't want to use it. In that case, you simply push the control button that says trim assist and you'll hear a chirp and on the dash the screen will pop up and say that the trim assist is deactivated. Then you can use the power trim with your thumb on the throttle control just like normal. A very important safety feature is the ignition safety lanyard. That is this piece of equipment right here, which is on all cobalts, regardless of size. This is designed to be clipped to something on the captain, whether it's his life jacket, a bathing suit, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just clip it on and forget it. It is designed should the captain get taken away from the helm for whatever reason, he forgets and walks away from the helm, or the boat gets suddenly thrown off course, whatever reason. When that happens, this gets pulled off, and what it does is it immediately shuts down both engines right now. This does not hurt the engines. You will hear a chirp, and on the Garmin screens, it will say that the safety lanyard is lost. At that point, you will continue to hear it chirp occasionally, and there will be a red icon on the Garmin screen saying SLY. The operator, the captain, can then restart the engines as necessary, but you will continue to hear that chirping noise until the switch that has been pulled loose by this little lanyard is reset. Once that is reset, that red icon will go away and you're back in business. It's very important that this is used 100% of the time. It is a great safety feature and one that you should get into the habit of using all the time. The A36 Bowrider air conditioning system is a 110 volt system, as all marine air conditioners are. You either have to run off of shore power or your generator. Today, we're in the dock and we're running off of shore power, so we have to make sure that it's lined up properly. So we'll double check now on this boat to make sure we are. And we are, we've got our shore power selected and the air conditioning circuit breaker turned on. So the next step is we're going to turn on the air conditioner itself at the control panel. All we have to do is touch the panel. It brings up the ambient temperature here in the cabin and the system turns on. We're gonna select the positive and negative indicators, selecting the negative one, which shows where the temperature is selected, and it's selected at 72 degrees, and it's 90 in here, so it's going to automatically turn on the cold cycle. Within a few moments, it will energize the compressor, and at the same time, the compressor will kick in the seawater pump. It's important that you check the discharge on the side of the boat for water coming out. The important thing to remember about air conditioning, for those of you that keep your boat on a trailer or up in the air on a hydro hoist or, or some sort of a hoist, the boat has to be in the water to run air conditioning. It is a water-cooled system. It is a heat pump system similar to the air conditioning heating system in your home, 
which is air-cooled, but in your boat, it's a water-cooled system. So it is literally pumping water out of the lake, through the system, and back out into the lake. That's why you see water squirting out of the side of the boat when the air conditioning is running. So we just need to double check that water is being discharged overboard. That way we know that the system is operating correctly. And already I can start to feel cooler air starting to circulate around the boat. So I know it's working properly without even checking, but I will do so here in just a moment. And that's basically all I have to do. It is a heat pump system, so once I've set the temperature, it will maintain the temperature whether it gets hot or cold. The A36 Bow Rider has the Spider 12 volt DC distribution system. This is a computer controlled system receiving its power from the house battery. The control panel is located right here in the entryway to the cabin. There are four control buttons right on the bottom of the panel. The first one on the left controls the lighting. You simply press it and it brings up the screen that you can control all the lighting in the boat. These are secondary controls actually because you can also control all of the lights from the individual stations in the boat with the exception of the lights in the cabin itself. You can only control the cabin lighting from this panel. After the light icon, the next icon over looks like a set of gears and it's actually the mechanical page. This is set up more for your dealer and it isn't anything that you really need to be concerned with. The next icon over is the battery page. And this is a good page for you to know about. I want to use an example here. Let's say that you're out on the hook and having a great day with your family. And it's one of those days where you don't need air conditioning, so you don't have your generator running. But you've been out for a few hours and you've been using the swim platform, stereo's been playing, but you do decide that you do want to run the generator, but yet it won't start. Come down here to this panel in the uh, cabin and touch your battery icon and you might see that the house battery voltage is very low. The generator has to have a certain amount of voltage or it won't even try to start. That's why it won't start is because the battery voltage is too low on that house battery. You've got a couple of choices here. The simplest thing to do without disrupting anybody's fun is to simply go back to the battery panel, the switch panel in the back of the boat, right next to the entryway where you turn the battery switches on and off, and turn the two main battery switches to the merge position. What that does is it combines all three batteries, both the main engine batteries and the house battery into one giant battery then you'll be able to start your generator. Once the generator is up and running, after a few minutes, go ahead and turn those two main engine batteries back to their normal on position. Throughout this procedure, once the generator is running, make sure that up here in the cabin, on your cabin distribution panel, that your generator switch is selected and that the battery charger is turned on. Keep in mind that battery charger is a 60 amp charger and when that generator is supplying that 110 volt voltage to that battery charger, we've got 60 amps going into those batteries and they're going to come up quickly and you're all set for the rest of the day. The other alternative is to get everybody out of the water, bring your swim platform up, and start your main engines. And the alternators on your main engines will immediately start charging that house battery back up, immediately being within a minute or two. But that'll take a little bit longer and you have to inconvenience all your friends to get out of the water because you never want to start your engines with anybody in the water around the boat. So once again, the simplest thing is just to combine your batteries with the merge position on the switches, start your generator, put them back to on, 
Make sure your panel is lined up to the generator position, that your battery, uh, your battery charger switch is turned on, and you're set to go. That's all there is to it. The far right hand button is a settings button. If you press on it, it brings up the settings screen, and most importantly, it brings up the third position says diagnostics, and you push on that, and it brings up many different things. If you get a fault code, there will be a red triangle flashing on this screen indicating that there is a fault in the system. And when you see that red triangle flashing, you come over and you push fault status, and it will tell you what the fault is. And in this particular case, it says overcurrent protection activated, check overcurrent page to reset. So you simply go across the screen and you see overcurrents. You push that and it brings up all the different pages that there are. And you simply scroll across until you find one that has a highlighted in red screen. And it says electric seat and it's highlighted in red. All you have to do is push that and it turns back to gray and that system has been reset and you have eliminated the fault. Go back to your lights, you're done. You have reset the fault. And no matter what kind of a fault comes up in the system, that's all you have to do to reset it. But should that fault reoccur, it's then time to contact your dealer let him know what's going on and he's going to advise you go ahead and continue to use the boat we'll take a look at it when it's convenient for you or he might say you know that's something that we need to look into right away the a36 power rider includes this cockpit ac dc refrigerator meaning that it runs on both shore power generator or ship's power it's a drawer type refrigerator, including a very small ice compartment. Won't make ice, but it'll keep ice. And in the back of that compartment is the thermostat. You have to reach back there a little ways, but you can adjust the temperature of it. If you have both AC power coming into the boat, and you, of course, got DC power in the boat, it's going to run off AC power. It'll automatically select that. If you unplug from AC power, shore power, and you don't have your generator running, it will automatically switch over to DC power. You don't have to change anything. It does it all automatically. It's a very efficient refrigerator, takes very little power to run, no problem. Let's talk about the hydraulic swim platform, which is standard equipment on the A36 Power Rider. Cobalt has been installing the hydraulic swim platform for many years now on many models, so it's a tried and proven system. It is controlled by a panel right here in the walkthrough area of the boat, and it has many safety features. The first one is that you never want to use it to raise anything but itself. It is not designed to raise people or equipment. No, you cannot put your jet ski on it and raise it out of the water. But most importantly, it is not designed to raise and lower people into the water. Please do not do that. Number two, from the standpoint of safety, is that it cannot be used with the engines running. As a matter of fact, the ignitions have to be turned off. Not only are the engines not going to run, but the ignitions themselves have to be turned off or the system is completely disabled. So once you've got your ignitions turned off, you would push the swim platform down button and you will hear this really obnoxious alarm and you will hear it for about three to four seconds before the platform starts to move. And what is happening is the system is dropping or lowering the drive units 
of the of the propulsion system to make sure they're down and out of the way so that the platform as it goes down cannot hit the drives. You can stop the movement of the platform anytime you want to by simply removing your hand from the down button. So you can stop it an inch down or a foot down wherever you want to. Most of the time you're going to hold the button as I have done until it's all the way down and submerged underwater. Makes a great place to just sit and enjoy the afternoon sitting in the water watching the kids whatever. Additionally underneath the platform there is a three-step ladder that can be deployed so that you not only have the platform underwater but you have a ladder that you can climb up to the platform if need be. To raise the platform you simply reverse the procedure. Whether the ladder is still down or not you can push the swim platform up button. Again you will hear that alarm go off, there will be a short delay and then the platform will raise. Once the platform is all the way up, please remember that if you have deployed that boarding ladder to raise it and house it back underneath the platform. That's very important to do. And you're done. You're ready to go boating again. Thanks for your time and watching this video. Please don't forget that your cobalt dealer is the expert and is always available to you to answer any questions that might come up in the future. From all of us at Cobalt, thank you for your business and enjoy the water.